Why would the Chinese build a crazy double helix bridge in the clouds? Could they just make a straight one? Are they show-offs? Well, actually, they have an excellent reason for doing what they do. Today, we're going to be exploring the Ganhaisi Bridge's fantastic design and the technology behind it. But before we can continue, share your thoughts with us down below. Do you think Chinese engineers are show-offs? Let us know. China has continually amazed the world with its incredible infrastructure developments. Economic experts presume that China's progress in terms of infrastructure construction is a stronger indicator of their economy than GDP growth rates. An astonishing example of China's construction prowess is this mega bridge, which won four world firsts in one fell swoop. Ganhaisi Bridge is 1,811 meters in total length, 24.5 meters wide, and it has 36 spans. It's the longest steel tube truss girder highway bridge on Earth, and it's located in Ximian County, Ya'an, Xichuan, on the Yaxi Expressway. It opened to traffic on April of 2012. The Yaxi Expressway is one of the longest in China. The highway is a 240-kilometer-long road reaching for the clouds. And for that reason, the Yaxi is also known as the Sky Road. The road is in a section of the Beijing-Kunming Highway and has many wonderful attractions on its course, one of which is the Ganhaisi Bridge. The extraordinary part of the construction of this bridge is that it was mainly made from steel fiber concrete, which is the first time such a material has been used in bridge building on Earth. Not only does the Sichuan province have the longest mileage, the largest investment, and a large number of world records set, it's also a pioneer of rarely used materials, as the Ganhaisi Bridge proves. The location of the Sichuan province in the mountainous terrain and with partially complicated geology, soil conditions, and topography as well, increase the difficulty of constructing conventional bridges, since their weight is similar to that of buildings. Consequently, the steel tube-tied arch bridge was chosen, as there were benefits like material saving and light self-weight. The design and construction of this bridge can withstand high-intensity seismic activity, which was demonstrated after the Lushan earthquake. Thus, the rise of concrete-filled steel tube-tied arch bridges is due to the realization of their win-win economic and technological aspects. Furthermore, they help to improve the integrity and the safety of bridge-crossing structures. Because of these facts, concrete-filled steel tube-tied arch bridges are now the leading choice in the bridge-building field. Still, there are setbacks, and earthquakes are far from being the Ganhaisi Bridge's only challenge. When this bridge enters winter, the temperatures lower, and the road surface is slippery and easy to accumulate snow. Thus, snow removal vehicles and other emergency rescue equipment need to be equipped. The guardrails on both sides of the bridge have been raised by 30 centimeters, meaning that it's safer for cars to ride, and there's less chance of accidents. Similarly, the bridge's piers have a different air pipe design, which makes their weight lighter. I bet you learned a lot so far. To keep watching awesome videos like this one, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. It means the world to us. As we can see, each part of the design was thought out for specific purposes. So it's no wonder that the Ganhaisi Bridge, along with its connected Ganhaisi Tunnel, is considered to be one of the most critical projects on the Yangtze Expressway. Without it, a lot of people would not be able to travel without difficulties. Because the Ganhaisi Bridge and the Ganhaisi Tunnel are located on the Mediterranean Sea, Himalaya Volcanic Seismic Belt, this means that you can expect high-intensity earthquakes to happen in Ya'an's vicinity. Local authorities were pretty worried during the bridge's design process that it could easily be damaged by a strong earthquake. As I already mentioned in the video, the bridge was able to withstand a powerful earthquake back in 2013. But how did the designers and engineers of the Ganhaisi Bridge manage to achieve such a feat? Well, they put the concerns with earthquake resistance at the forefront of the design. They knew that it wouldn't matter if the bridge was efficient for traffic and pretty if it couldn't hold its own against Mother Nature's forces. Of course, that's not to say that the bridge doesn't accomplish all of that. <laughs> I mean, look at it, it's beautiful. But anyways, going back to the practice, China achieved earthquake resistance by mostly using concrete with tensile properties when they built the Ganhaisi Bridge. The engineers tried as much as possible to make a lightweight, tensile-resistant, and highly elastic all-metal structure bridge. The design applies X-type and K-type multi-section auxiliary load-bearing structure buffer brackets. That means that even if all of the steel piers of the Ganhaisi Bridge look thinner than ordinary concrete piers, the bridge's bearing capacity and yield resistance aren't less than that of the common pillars. Ganhaisi Bridge measures 9 on the earthquake intensity scale. It has a complex engineering structure to cushion the impact of even the strongest of earthquakes, so you can be rest assured that it's going to be safe and sound in nearly every case. Even if the bridge's own endurance limit is surpassed due to the high earthquake intensity, the Ganhaisi Bridge can still survive before its complex steel pipe energy absorption mechanism completely collapses, which gives vehicles a chance to cross in a short time and rescuers the possibility to evacuate as many survivors as possible before the entire bridge collapses. 
Besides being able to withstand powerful earthquakes, the complex spiral structure of the Gun Heisey Bridge is the central motive for why the bridge has gained so much recognition and gathered so many world firsts. If a normal construction design was followed, many things would not be possible about this bridge. Since the 12-kilometer road section where the Gun Heisey Bridge is located has an altitude of as high as 713 meters, if the traditional tunnel construction method was used, only a few military vehicles would be able to climb that slope. Besides, the Ya'an area is notorious for its low temperatures and heavy snowfall which prompts a road freezing effect. Because of that, if the road was a straight line instead of a helix, only armored vehicles with rubber tracks would be able to pass. So, the Gan Haisi Bridge's double helix structure has a lot of advantages. Not only does it slow down the slope's increase, but it can also improve the driver's attentiveness due to its curve and speed limit. This way, drivers are more likely to pass the ramp smoothly, where more accidents can be avoided this way. Plus, it's beautiful to look at. I mean, I mean, the genius and effectiveness of this bridge coupled with its beauty prove why China is a leading force in bridge construction and design. However, that wouldn't be possible without a man who dared to dream. A man who innovated when everyone else was too scared to do it. Mao Tingmin is a vital designer and expert in concrete-filled steel tube bridge technology. He's built many bridges with this technology, among which the Gain Haisi is the biggest. But why does he use this technology as opposed to a traditional one? According to him, there are a few significant advantages to using concrete-filled steel tube bridge technology. But first, a little background on the technology is going to be essential. Despite the application of such technology being something new, that doesn't mean that scientists and engineers haven't been studying it for a while. Concrete-filled steel tube bridge is a bridge type with China's independent intellectual property rights. It's been developed for the past 30 years, and the results show that there are two main advantages to it. First, steel tube has a restraint effect on concrete, high bearing capacity, small section support, material saving, as well as cost saving. Second, steel pipe is regularly used in temporary construction facilities to pour concrete. Afterward, the steel pipe and concrete are part of the structure, which dramatically reduces the cost of some temporary measures. With that, concrete filled steel tube bridges have the following benefits. They're suitable for the environment, they can have a unique design, and they're cost effective. In other words, Concrete-filled steel tubular bridge technology is definitely the leading bridge building technology in the world. Right now, China has the edge on it, since no other country has replicated the feat. The future of bridge technology, yeah, it's promising. But we're just gonna have to wait and see what other fascinating developments China is going to offer to the world. So, were you amazed by this new construction technology? Let us know in the comment section down below. If you want to see more similar projects, then you can watch our video, Explained. How China builds so fast? <laughs> the American president is shocked. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.